Hey. Hey you. You wanna help me with my video? I'm gonna put a snack on these two cameras and you decide which one I should open up to get the mystery film out of. Ready? Can you believe it's been like nine to 10 months since the last time I had a point and shoot camera with some mystery film in it? Seems like just yesterday. It does seem like my own efforts at finding point and shoot cameras and thrift stores in general has kind of went right off a cliff. Like I don't see them very often at all. And when I do, they never have film in it. But luckily I got, I got a bunch of other people out there who know I'm into this kind of thing. So when they spot them, they pick them up for me sometimes. And that's why I came across this one, uh, Samsung Ibex 3X. This was found by a guy named Paul who is actually responsible for the last one I did in November. So once again, thanks Paul. And disclaimer, if you've somehow found this video searching for this camera because you have it and want to learn how to use it, I'm not going over anything about that. So you can just dump out now if that's your goal. What I'm here for is the sweet, sweet roll of film that is still in here, probably exposed. As you know, I like to do this kind of stuff on this channel every now and then. But the thing about this camera that's unique versus all the other times I've done this is that peeking through the window, that green in there, it says Ilford HP5. So for the first time ever on this channel, it's not just some consumer grade color film, but honest to God, traditional black and white film. This kind of makes my expectations change a little bit because the, the basic consumer color film is what, you know, your, your mom or dad would have grabbed 20 years ago and just went and shot haphazardly. But when I see a roll of HP5 black and white film, I think it opens up the doors that whoever was using this is possibly developing their own film at home, which means they're probably more into photography, understand stuff better. So if there are pictures on here, it might be better than the average crop. And if they're developing at home, this highly raises the bar to having tasteful nudes on it. Or maybe even untasteful nudes. But I'm not really entirely sure I want that to happen because then it brings up this like moral dilemma of like, can I show you other people's naked photos? What kind of censorship can I get away with? Uh, well, well, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. But in the meantime, this is flashing E up here, which I hope means empty. So I'm gonna crack it open and ideally our film is rewound up on this side and we can see what's on it. Okay, I've cracked open the camera and got the film out. And when I was in the dark bag, digging around with it, trying to get the film off, it, it wasn't rewound like I was expecting because of the E, but what it was, was about half of it was taken up. So I expect we have at least half a roll of mystery possible nude photos here. So next step, hit the dev tanks. <clears throat> so to develop this film, I'm gonna use what I have left of my old HC 110 stock. I had a bunch more than this left last year, but over the winter, the, the thicker, bigger jug that's not in this little bottle was kind of up close against one of these basement walls and I don't know if it was the cold leaking through or what, but the the bottle kind of sucked itself in to the point that the, the corner of the bottle cracked open and blah, developer all over my workbench. It was not fun to clean up. It's like the consistency of maple syrup. It's just, ugh. Just like going to the doctor. <laughs> nice. The ambient temperature of this water has just been sitting down here is exactly what I need to develop this film at. Boom! Whoops! <laughs> Didn't snap on my cap quick enough. See you in a few minutes! Moment of truth. Do, 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 do.
I see zero nudity so far. All right, looks like we have some uh, PG photos of people and kids, maybe. Uh, I don't know. I will let these dry and we will scan these tomorrow and reveal the found mystery photos of the camera whose name I forgot. Are you ready to see the photos? I sure as hell hope so, cause you don't have much choice in the matter. Here we go. So all the photos that were on this roll of film involved this group of students pictured here at a visual art exhibition. Or maybe more accurately, this group of students because the woman and the boy in the previous photo never make an appearance again. It's all about these five. So of the few remaining photos that were on the roll of film, there's one of each of these five girls standing next to what I assume is their own piece in the exhibition. So here's this girl with some painted plate of some sort. And here's this girl with what appears to be a dress or something she made, or some kind of clothing piece, a woven fabric of such. And then this girl next to what appears to be a painting. And then this girl next to a kind of a photograph maybe a composite photograph image and then these two girls again next to some pieces above their head which I, again I assume it's theirs but that means this girl got multiple pieces into the show if true good on her right yeah so before I even started to deep dive into the details try to figure out more about these photos my, my gut feeling on the initial pass of looking at them is just based on the fashion and this old computer monitor this one photo I was guessing somewhere around the early 2000s is when these pictures were taken. And while the resolution on this film, it's kind of overexposed or maybe even overdeveloped, yeah, that's on me, it makes it really hard to read any of the fine details on these photos, so I wasn't really able to pull much information out of the words. But if we go to this picture of the two girls in front of the library rack with those classic library magazine protectors, you know, so people don't ruin the magazine as they're flipping through it at the library, Kind of browsing around and you see like a copy of Forbes and Newsweek and Good Housekeeping and Snowmobiler, which I'm guessing is really important. Again, nothing that I can read a date on except down this one corner we got Consumer Reports 2004 Cars. So, ooh, 2004, I nailed it. This is right about when I thought these pictures were taken. Oh, I feel so happy. Okay, so we're looking at some roughly, oh God, math. 17-ish year old photos of an art exhibit. So the only other real info you can read off anything in here is the uh, MSHSL Region 7 AA Art Festival. And when I looked that up, the MSHLA is the Minnesota State High School League. And looking at the documentation on the MSHSL website, Region 7 AA kinda currently occupies a large swath of northeast Minnesota going all the way up through Duluth, around through Brainerd, and skimming just off the top of the Twin Cities. But these regions may change a bit over time, so it might have been smaller back in 2004. I don't know, I couldn't find that information. However, I've been unable to pinpoint any more details within these photos to pinpoint exactly where this exhibition took place. But that's about it for these photos, just uh couple of snapshots of a bunch of high school students having an exhibition of the visual art. Pretty wild, huh? And I guess with that, I will let you go. Like this video if you've made it this far. Later.